set as something called as the class 5. So the class 5 does include several medications as well like adenosine, digoxin and also magnesium sulfate. So what happens is adenosine we all are aware it is more of a vagotonic and also having anti-adrenergic and but it tends to affect on the dip slow inward calcium current and causing the hyperpolarization in fact. So on the ECG or even in the EP as well we will be able to see uh, the slowing of the AV mode conduction and the purinergic agonists is a fancy way to describe the adenosine. Currently it is the only medication in this class. Although different attempts at varying the molecule have been made in an attempt to capture patients, patents and also increase profits at different drug companies. Its mode of action does include a direct effect on a slow inward calcium current and increasing the potassium conductance, therefore hyperpolarizing the cell. It's also a potent vagotonic and anti-adrenergic medication as well. And that's why when evaluated by using the uh, EP study, it increases the length of time between an atrial ECG and the his ECG. So it increases the time of conduction through the AV node. And uh, we all are aware its main usage is uh, in termination of the re tachycardias. It can also be used for other atrial tachycardias as well to give AV block for diagnosis. It is metabolized uh, in the RBCs and vascular endothelial cells. Therefore, is a short-acting medication. Its half-life is like just a few seconds, up to 10 seconds in fact. But it's a wonderful drug in fact. Uh, I have had just... Uh, uh, especially for the usage of adenosine after EF ablation, I have like nearly seven to eight publications. And in fact, for the usage of a adenosine after EF, I will also became a reviewer to the Lancet. So that was a big prestige <laughs> deal uh, for me. In fact, so it does have some drug interactions as well, like with caffeine. Theophylline and with several side effects as well. So as I had already said, it, it, since it uh, promotes dormant reconduction, so you you may be able to see AFib, even a sinus bradycardia or bronchospasm, headache or nausea as well. So the, the main question uh, remains is, what does it do? Yeah, so what does this drug do actually, you know? Why are we so much bothered about this drug? So I had already uh, said about the mechanism, right? So it works on the A1 adenosine receptors, opening the ECH-sensitive potassium channels, inhibiting the calcium in the uh, calcium current, in fact. And that's how it suppresses the calcium-dependent action potential. So that is how, and with hyper polarization it tends to affect more of the AV node in fact not on the SA node so this drug uh, adenosine tends to interrupt the re-entry and the aberrant uh, pathways through the AV node and thus it does help uh, for the uh, diagnosis and treatment of such medications so it's a wonderful drug for the narrow complex PSVT and the SVT uh, which are reliant on the AV nodal pathways. So it's a great drug. But you should not try to use it for the atrial flutter or even fibrillation or the VT as well. So regarding the contraindications, so what happens is um, we are aware if the, there is a patient with a VT or hypertension and deterioration, better to avoid giving this drug. Otherwise, if, uh, yeah, this drug can cause 
even bronchospasm as well but we are aware that it's a very short acting drug so it may be seen pretty fine so there's a step up theory how you should be using this drug so for example start with 6 milligram going to 12 going up to 15 as well and always followed by a quick NS flush as well and in the meantime whenever you are giving this drug as well keep recording the ECG rhythm as well yes sometimes patient may complain of chest pain otherwise maybe even having a sometimes ventricular ectopy as well so if you look carefully this is the classical response with the adenosine what you notice over here so once we are aware of the adenosine what about these other medications which is included the other medications includes is digoxin so regarding its mode of action it it inhibits the sodium potassium ATPase and due to the positive ionotropic and phagotonic action we see various changes on the ECG as well like it by prolonging the increasing the PR interval it also depresses the ST segment and decreases the QT interval and as I had already said it, it is used also for the SVTs but of course not for the accessory pathways um, uh, the T half is almost around 36 hours I would say 36 to 48 hours as well and if uh, it does have a lot of drug interactions in the sense if it is being used with comedin, it tends to increase the prothrombin time okay similarly uh, if you are using this medication with the quinidine, amiodarone or verapamil it can raise the digoxin level and the renal function or the renal tubular excretion may be affected whenever it is being used with a spironolactone so similarly that's the reason you should not give digoxin um, if there is a patient of hypocalcemia otherwise even hypokalemia as well because as I had already said it digoxin is the one which acts on sodium potassium ATPs so if there is already um, low potassium so the patient will go into severe crisis in fact so that's why it will be patient will be having a lot of arrhythmias in fact and of course the toxicity symptoms include the nausea, vomiting, letharginess can be there in fact visual changes may be there on the metabolic picture if you'll try to get a ABG done there may be hyperkalemia or even hypercalcemia similarly hypokalemia or even hypermagnesemia can be seen okay arrhythmias can be seen as well VT delayed after depolarizations may be seen and as I had already said it about the digoxin toxicity if you're trying to treat so what you try to do is immediately you should try to clean the GI using Ipecac or lavage or charcoal with the cathartic right so uh, if the yeah if the deoxin levels are very high then yes you may have to pace the patient and otherwise If the patient is having SVT, you can think for phenytoin or even beta blockers as well. And otherwise, for example, for the VT, you may think for lidocaine, 1 mg per kg or even phenytoin. And always remember this, that don't cardiovert the patient with digoxin toxicity. Otherwise, the DC cardioversion may cause refractory VT or VF. So this is a very dangerous situation what may happen uh, due to this. So, so as I had already said it, so this is a cardioglycoside. Increases the, the class 1C calcium in fact and it does have Inotropic effect. So this is the only available oral inotropic agent, which tends to increase the force of contraction. Uh, 
and the AV node increased refractoriness in fact and there is decreased conduction through the AV node and the SA node and when you look on the chronotropic action there is overall negative action so it tends to decrease the heart rate in fact and that is how it reduces the ventricular response to the supraventricular tachycardias so like any other drug digoxin does also have its contraindications so you should not give it in for patient with sick sinus syndrome or even accessory pathways similarly if there is a elderly or renal failure patient better to reduce the dose or even the toxicity in fact so whenever you are trying to think for the ACLS and all protocol it's a great drug especially which can be sometimes used especially uh, in relationship to the other drugs which is being used so this is on the chart you all can go through later on so one of the other important drug which is always missing I have noticed is magnesium sulfate so it has been included especially in the latest ACLS protocol for the treatment of torsades the pointers and uh, so this is the drug uh, which can be used for prolonged PI interval, QT interval, or even premature age of complexes, atrial tachycardia, and even for EF as well. Similarly, if the patient is having ventricular premature beats, VT or Tutsads as well, it, this is a great drug in fact. A lot of times, if you are coming across the hypermagnesemia, which is facilitated, uh, which facilitates the digitalis toxic arrhythmias, in fact, so it's another wonderful drug. So that's why, um, uh, whenever you are already using, uh, you have used like lidocaine or beryllium as well, for example, for the VT treatment. So this is the other drug which can be of great importance and great uh, value addition for such patients in fact. And uh, yes, there are a lot of clinical trials which has already been done but have not shown too much of uh, positive effect as well, especially about the chronic cardiovascular disease. So yes, the effect of the magnesium as I already had said it um, it has been difficult to see in cases of acute myocardial infarction especially on tough parameters like are there any mortality benefits or not so that's why um, it becomes a little bit confusing that whether it should be given or not so as I said it the data has been confusing so but we all are aware about the beta blockers and all even the aspirin okay those are definitely the drugs which should be used but about this hmm, it is difficult to say and as I already said about that it is a great therapy it has a great therapeutic modality especially for treatment of preeclampsia in fact and a uh, lot of data has already shown that uh, if there is a longer time between the start of myocardial perfusion, dream perfusion, and the achievement of therapeutic serum magnesium concentration, it may account for null finding in the ISIS flow, in fact. So, as I was telling you, sometimes lethal arrhythmias can happen whenever you are trying to use these uh, uh, antiarrhythmic drugs. So, that's why we should be aware about these side effects. So, in if we can look at already over here with quinidine or even with sotalol, side effects can be quite a lot high. So that's why I say it like this. So whenever you are trying to use any medication, always try to be 